Welcome to today's lesson on resolving forces. To access the resources for this lesson, go to parkmaths.com forward slash y2 forces. So in year two, resolving forces comes within the forces and moments unit. And in this unit, we'll be looking at the following things. We'll be learning how to resolve forces in two dimensions, including on inclined plates. Inclined plane is just a fancy word for a slope. We're also going to be looking at finding the magnitude and direction of a resultant force in two dimensions. Here are some specific things you should be confident with before starting. Make sure you're confident solving problems with displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs with constant acceleration. If necessary, remind yourself how to use Newton's second law to resolve forces along a straight line. And also make sure you're confident with pulleys and connected particles. If you haven't done so already, make sure you have a go at the checking questions on the lesson page. And if you struggle with any of those questions, make sure you go back and review your notes from earlier in the course. OK, let's have a look at resolving forces in two dimensions. The key idea behind this unit of work is splitting a single force into two perpendicular components. We can take the 20 Newton force and we can consider the horizontal and vertical components to be the sides of a right angle triangle. Using trigonometry, X is the adjacent side and the 20 Newton force is the hypotenuse. So we can use cosine 35 equals X over 20. And if we rearrange that, we get X equals 20 cos 35. Y is the opposite side in the triangle. So to find Y, we can use sine 35 equals Y over 20. That rearranges to y equals 20 sine 35. So what we're going to do is take the 20 Newton force and replace it with two forces which have an equivalent effect. A horizontal force of 20 cos 35 and a vertical force of 20 sine 35. By doing that, we can simplify a lot of 2D force calculations. However, Rather than having to draw out triangles and use trigonometry every single time we want to resolve a force, we can use a couple of simple rules which make the process much shorter. Let's consider a force F at an angle theta to the horizontal. If we want to take F in the horizontal direction, notice how we cross the angle. I'll just show the animation again. Taking that down to the horizontal crosses the angle. That gives us F cos theta. So the rule that will allow you to simplify all of these calculations is if you cross the angle, you use cos. If we don't cross the angle and we go in the other direction, that will be F sine theta. If you can remember that, you've got a really good chance of being able to deal with all the different kinds of problems covered in this unit. OK, here are a few quick fire questions then. For each diagram, what you need to do is take the force given and find the components in the positive x and y direction. What we mean by the positive x direction is anything to the right in this case, and the positive y direction is up the page. If you find that a force goes in the opposite of either of those, you would give the value as a negative. All of these questions are in the PowerPoint, and you can check your answer for them by clicking on any of these boxes shown. 